Hello folks, this is Jamil Swear for Gun Stock Reviews. We're here in Phoenix, Arizona, the headquarters of Enlo Custom Guns with Marty. How you doing, buddy? Good. Marty, uh, we have here Dave's old shotgun. Um, we removed the furniture and put this uh, speed feed um, tactical multi-cam furniture set. Mm -hmm. and, but his is a hunting gun. You know, we're thinking, yeah, you can take it out hunting and do all sorts of cool things with it. Mm -hmm. But I just found some old parts at home, 18 and a half inch barrel, uh, choke extender for you mag know, tube, yeah, you know, mag tube, and the original spring for the choke. And we're thinking, Marty, can you put that on there? Because, uh, and also we have the Vang, um, BCS safety, yeah. yeah, the safety. So which is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. um, Let's go ahead and make it completely tactical. And but the thing we were talking about is this thing has a detents on the tube. And let's talk about that for a second. Okay. There's three ways that people have been doing this for a while. Okay. Number one, Dremel, which is Yeah. I did want that myself, okay? Back early two thousands. I took a Dremel tool and I dremeled the detents off. Okay. Uh, it was a mess. <laughs> took me about three hours to clean the tube of all the sure. shavings and whatever. Mm -hmm. The other one is somebody told me get a socket head and pound it through. Yeah, that's, uh, I mean, I've never used a socket head. I'd be a little worried about getting it stuck in there. But yeah, that's, uh, that's another way. That's another way. Okay. And you have a tool that you made. I, I have a tool I made that, that kind of does what the socket does. I mean, uh, that's, 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 uh, Basically, the socket method, but it's a specific tool kind of made to spread it out. Okay. Um, I have I have seen another way that people have done it where they've just simply taken, uh, they, they've simply drilled holes where the where the detents would go. Yeah, okay. That, and, I heard about that one too. Yeah. So there's four ways of yeah, doing it. Uh, <laughs> I think your way is much better. Yeah, well, I, that, that was a, that, that was a, a tool that uh, we had specific for that that uh, I, I think... Uh, I think, I think years ago, for whatever reason, I lost one, and then we just turned around and made another one. Um, but uh, I used to make custom mag tube extensions for 870s all the time, and so it kind of depended on a, 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 a well, uh, I believe it's a Wingmaster, this model, where it has the... the this is the Express Magnum. Oh, okay, Express, okay. So anyway, they, they have a, like this one has a barrel detent on the barrel itself, and so we're kind of describing this. This has a little plastic and on the cap here, and this portion here is what's holding the detents in. And there are two little capture uh, detent, or there's two little basically squeezed portions inside the mag tube that hold this in place so that it doesn't pop out. Yeah, let's or take the, this out. Yeah, there we go. And yeah, and that's where the detents are here. Yeah. Check them out. Yeah, there's one detent on top and one detent on the bottom. Mm -hmm. And that's where we're going to pound out now. So we're going to eliminate those so that a follower can go all the way up into the mag tube here unobstructed. Because otherwise, if you were to, you, I could put this on now, it's going to be there for looks. But uh, if I try to actually load all the ammunition to go inside this, the, the rounds won't go past these detents right here. So, so we have that out explained, explained and we'll, we'll pull these out and... Uh, you just kind of push the center, rotate it, and hopefully it doesn't fly out my face. There we go. And yeah, the whole yeah, thing pops out. You know, we definitely don't want that to fly in your face. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and do it. So this is what I'm going to do. We're, we're trying to eliminate these these detents here, right? These these compressions, right? So that we can we can get our follower to flow back and forth. This is a tool that I've had for some years, which is much like. Uh, what uh, Emil is describing, where you would you would push in a uh, a socket. The downside is with the socket. If I if I drive a socket in here, these two things are wedged in here, so they're not going to want to come out, right? So the idea behind this is that when I shove this in here, it's going to push these two detents out, and then I can grab this in a vise and pull it back off again. So once I drive these things in here, and 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 we'll we'll see the result. So. Okay, through the magic of television, right, we, uh, we've we uh, driven our tool in here and also kind of pounded these down a little bit. So now they're smooth on the inside that your follower can go in and out, right? 
So now your follower can easily go past. You can actually see this little, these little uh, uh, marks on the side here, these little channels. Those are meant so that you can only, you can only uh, get these out through, the, uh, through uh, uh, the channel right there so the, the follower can't fall out, right? Uh, but now it doesn't matter, so it'll travel in there, in and out. And here's one, one thing of note. Usually on police shotguns, these followers were discarded um, because they would open up uh, your, your, buckshot, uh, your buckshot loads while they were riding in a, in a car. This tip would kind of uh, uh, press on, the, uh, on yeah. the end of the shotgun shell and they would open up inside the, it would open up inside the, uh, the tube as it would ride in for months at a time. So these were typically gotten rid of. Now it doesn't really matter if it's just at home or something, but it was specifically was it riding around in a car. So that said, that's installed right there. At least we're, we're, we're done with that. And we can, we can finish assembling everything else, so. Yeah, yeah I'm, gonna, I'm gonna order a mm -hmm. Vang stainless steel mm -hmm. uh, follower yeah. for it. And maybe a brand new spring for Dave here. <laughs> and we'll keep this choke. This choke uh, mm -hmm. tube is, has a little corrosion in it is I think I picked this up good, uh, you know, almost 25 years ago. So it's been rolled hard and put up wet. So it's, it's still good. So have you assemble it. Okay. Let's kind of put these back in. reaching for the button on a Mossberg. <laughs> okay. And okay, as our grinder over there powers down, I just uh, I just cut off a few inches off of this because uh, we don't need that much spring and this spring's kind of a little mangled, but really for the most part, you don't need that much spring in there because at, at some point if, you sh if you're shoving rounds in there, that much spring is gonna limit how many rounds you can shove in there. So, the follower's in place. Uh, you know, it's an old spring that Mule had floating around, but uh, you can see there's still plenty of spring in there. And then uh, we'll uh, just run this thing on here. And like you said before, the detent now is here. Yeah, it's on. It's on the face of the uh, the barrel. The barrel. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Tac Star, uh, these things, uh, they're gonna have a tendency to separate out here. So when we when we tighten this down, it's gonna wanna push these two parts away. Oh, okay, so we we'll leave it off. Well, and, and here's another thing. These do have a tendency to loosen up and fly off. Oh, okay. So uh, the uh, our, our trick, I don't have any of this floating around, but we used to take some fuel line hose and put it in here. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, and I like say, if I had any floating around, I would I would throw some in there. But uh, well, maybe uh, I can get one, another mm -hmm. one, because eventually I'm doing this today mm -hmm. for the purpose of you know showing how it's done. Mm -hmm. I might get uh, one of the other clamps that you can buy at Brownells or okay. one of those places, yeah. and the, the solid clamps. Yeah, the the Mesa Tactical ma makes a pretty good one, but. Uh, you know, uh, in my time in roll bar, we used to use these a lot. Um, and w at, when I made shotguns, we used to we used to mount sights and we used to make custom mag tubes. And at some point, uh, we actually just started giving a lot of work to uh, to Vang because uh, we just started using their sights and we had a really good relationship with them. And uh, you know, they we actually would go back and forth with them so much it was easier for us to kind of kick that work onto them. Yeah, but, now uh, Bang is in Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> I know, so it's kind of yeah. hard for us to drive I, up there. I understand, but uh, you know, so that's one of the reasons why I'm very familiar with his stuff and I'm also familiar with, with some of these as well. Um, but uh, yeah, it, these can be made to work and they, they work okay, but uh, there are some things you gotta be aware of on these. Oh, well, I'm gonna hold off then. Thanks okay. for telling me. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna hold off on this one and I'll get one of the Mesa Tactical ones and we'll put it on next time. Okay. So now we're going to install our VCS safety, right? So I'm just going to pop these out. and Let's see here. Handy back of a screwdriver here. And... Wow. Those things are tight. I bet those have never been taken out. Probably not, the way they feel. Not, not to say that 
I want to see if I can better. get a really good sight saddle for oh. it too. Whatever. All right, that's coming out. There we go. Yeah, I think it's in there. Tight, huh? Yeah. Highly technical way to yeah. hammer your 870. Yeah, there's a little dirt in there, a little, a little stickiness there. Um, okay, so from here, pretty oh, simple. Wow, well, look at that. Remember when these things were made of aluminum? <laughs> well, I mean, you know, you, you still could find some of the ones that were made from aluminum, it depended on the model. Mm -hmm. But also, uh, also uh, the paint on these is very thick and very porous. Um, you, it, it, well, the, the aluminum is very porous, so sometimes if you would strip all of this paint off, you'd find holes all throughout these. It was kind of a challenge when we would MP3 them, but uh, so from here, it's pretty easy. I'm just gonna, there, there is a point on one side. You just wanna be mindful of the point when you're, when you're assembling it. It can come out from either side, but I'm covering a spring. And you can see that pointed pin just came out. And now there's a spring in here and there's a little ball bearing. And at least this one doesn't have the J hook. Those are. Yeah, those were horrible. Those were a terrible one. But then the safety is going to come in. You're going to have the dome towards your. You're going to have the dome towards your trigger finger. And then we're going to put our ball bearing back in. Um, and th these are these are not uh, ambidextrous. They won't go in one way or the other. So th these are really only right-handed on 870s. Otherwise, you have to do a a conversion. Um, and then what we're going to do here is we're going to uh, we're going to just grab a punch and just drive that down, and the point is going to go in first, and kind of work back and forth between two, two different punches, and slide that in. That's our safety install. Make sure it works real quick, but mechanism disconnects, and then we can just throw it back in the gun. do like to do things every once in a while. There we go. And thing I'm doing is checking the mechanism to make sure that when I pull the trigger and I still have applied pressure, it doesn't release until I let go. Let off pressure, there it goes. So that's one check I'm doing here. But uh, that right there is your safety install and uh, a much more tactical looking shotgun now. There you go, thanks Marty. Um, of course I'm gonna put it down here so that viewers don't say, you're pointing the gun at Marty. No, I'm not. It's right over there. It's over there. Um, we did this uh, setup today. This is an older barrel. Mm -hmm. We're going to get a new barrel for it later on. Um, this one is perfectly good. OK. A, I, yeah. mean, I used it for years, and it worked great. It's just a little ugly. Um, we'll get a new barrel for it later. And maybe we'll do some other upgrades to it sure. at a later date because it's right for a new thing. We're going to put a sight saddle on it and do all sorts of really cool things to it. But yeah, we changed the dome. We changed, we took the dimples out. Mm -hmm. We set up the extended tube mm -hmm. and we're to go. Now Dave has a home defense shotgun. Yeah. Now it's a, it's a good setup. I like the speed feed stock so you can put four rounds to mm -hmm. one each side. Originally, we were going to set it up as a hunting gun, but now... Now, oh, it's, uh, now it's much more tactical. Yeah, yeah. more tactical. Yes. Yeah. So we got a couple of ideas for it, so let's go ahead and work on it later. Okay. Thanks, Marty. Mm -hmm. I do appreciate it. Yeah. And again, guys, 
Stay tuned, we're gonna take this to the range and shoot it as is. We'll try some of the shotgun shells that we have, some of the Force X2 uh, ammo that breaks in two, and see how it works about 20 yards and see how the pattern changes from five, 10, 15, 20 yards. Mm -hmm. It'll be kind of cool to do it. Yeah, yeah. So thanks guys. Remember, stay tuned for more. And again, please remain healthy, stay safe, and definitely have fun on the range. Thank you for watching Gunstock Reviews. Please visit our website at www.gunstockreviews.com for more exclusive content. Please visit our patron page at www.patreon.com slash gunstockreviews. Your contributions would be greatly appreciated and help us grow our selections and frequency of videos.